to Heated Shenanigans Podcast. We are your hosts, Colin and Scott. And before we dive into today's episode, just real quick, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors of this podcast. First and foremost, Evil Genius Club Tattoo, located right here in Lafayette, Indiana, the premier destination for all of your tattoo and piercing needs. Make sure to stop by to book your next tattoo and or piercing appointment at Evil Genius Club Tattoo link to all of their social media descriptions in the description of this video. Also, our recent sponsor is Executive Cuts Barbershop, located again right here in Lafayette, Indiana. The absolute finest and most professional place to go get your next haircut or commit like I did and shave all this off. Though it'd be really hard to repeat business if you do that, but (laughs) nonetheless, make sure to visit Executive Cuts barbershop here in Lafayette, Indiana. And last and certainly not least, our friends over at Hooters, primarily in Lafayette, Indiana. Big sponsor, big supporter of Heated Shenanigans Podcast. If you guys are hungry and wanting a good view to go with that food, make sure to stop by Hooters here in Lafayette, Indiana. And with that, Colin, let's dive into the topic today. Edge has kind of been, well, the major topic of discussion amongst a lot of professional wrestling fans would be recent and alleged final match on WWE. I'd like to put that one on there. So I decided let's look back at this WWE run, the second run Edge has had in the WWE and find out did WWE drop the ball with Edge on the second run? <clears throat> Colin? What do you think? Uh, somewhat. Um, some of it was injury related. Um, he he wasn't fully healthy the entire time, so there's not. You can't put some. It's really difficult. You can, but it's very difficult to put somebody in a consistent and uh, well thought out storyline when they're injured. Um, so that's part of the problem. Uh, his comeback. Uh, during the Royal Rumble was fantastic. He got another Royal Rumble win, I believe, the next year. Um, so, like, overall, it's, it, it wasn't great. Um, there was a lot of people I felt like he should have faced off against that he never never did. Um, you could make the argument uh, in his age um, and his longevity um, that he probably had some creative control over what he was doing match-wise and who he wanted to face. Um, we don't know what his contract looked like, um, or what he was trying to accomplish. Um, but I, it wasn't ideal for somebody who, um, is a, is a huge edge fan. Um, but it was just nice to have him back. So, uh, and, and, and face off in a couple of things. I would have liked, you know, a major main event, um, at one of the big four pay-per-views that he, you know, I don't know. It, I, there was some questionable things um but it, it wasn't terrible like outside of the the one royal rumble win and his his return i don't it's not a whole lot i can look back on and go oh man that was some that was a highlight of edge edge's career so i would i would echo that and primarily the the 2020 return at the royal rumble was the peak that <clears throat> right that was such an amazing moment to see the only good thing that came out of that year actually and then <laughs> move forward to the next year edge wins the royal rumble coming in at number one and unfortunately didn't have any uh fans in attendance for that though well that and he went on to play second fiddle to Daniel Bryan in that triple threat match against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. That was 
ultimately won by Roman Reigns. It's, got, it's weird to sit here and think that 2021 Roman Reigns was still world champion. And we're in 2023, going into close to 2024, not too much longer. Roman's still the champion. But this isn't about Roman Reigns. This is about Edge. So, I do think the injuries played, a, unfortunately, a large role. This felt to me, and I don't know about you or anybody out there watching, this just felt like it was a final farewell tour, and it was all of Edge's greatest hits. You you got to see the brood Edge come back at SummerSlam against um, Seth Rollins. You got to see the little bit darker, edgier, for lack of a better term, version of Edge in Judgment Day for the cup of coffee he had as the leader of Judgment Day. He did get to face off against AJ Styles. They, they had the rated RKO one-on-one match. I, the, the pandemic really hurt this run of Edge for what we got because I, I, I feel it could have been a lot better. But at the same time, this it, it felt like a, a farewell tour that progressively got worse as time elapsed. Yeah, um... Farewell tour is a good way to put it. I it's just there, there's way too much we missed out on um, that we could have gotten. Like when you think of a, 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 a like an Attitude Era or one of those wrestlers coming back, you you look at all the people he could face off against um, and and all the people he could have matches with, and you go, oh well, this would be a dream match, and this would be a dream match, and how many do we really get? There were legitimate dream matches. like Rollins and Edge was good. I, right. I can't say anything negative about it. Orton and Edge I mean, we had was seen good. that before. That's not really a dream match when it's happened before. We're Styles. Looking at... AJ Styles and Edge was good. Right. But it's like... I don't know. I mean, there was a few people... There's some matches that... Could, that obviously, if you'd have been there like a year or two earlier... That would have been nice to take place. That that flood of people leaving for AEW, um, kind of kind of bit us in bit us in the keister there. Um, but it, like, I would have liked for him to go out um, with at least another major title. Um, that never happened. I felt like he should have at least won the the, the heavyweight title at least once. Um, for something, maybe a Money in the Bank or something like that. I mean. The, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of good ideas that could have come up, but they really didn't. And I get that Edge is you know uh, older and doesn't necessarily need these things, or um, maybe he didn't want them to take away from the younger guys. I mean, he's the one who made the the Money in the Bank cash in so memorable, um, and started that trend of of how to do it correctly. So, the, the could thing, have been better. The thing with Edge, though, we didn't get to see him at what I felt was his best work. And Edge as a heel is just infinitely better than Babyface Edge. And, and he came, this run was primarily as a Babyface. He, he kind of leaned into the heel aspect with Judgment Day for the cup of coffee he had with him. He kind of leaned into like a tweener against Seth Rollins. But we never got to see one more full-blown, rated-R superstar run, which is unfortunate. And maybe he's saving it for that AEW appearance that keeps getting talked about. But the thing that bugged me the most is for someone that had their career taken from them originally with that horrific neck injury and fight back and to never get the farewell that he has earned. His retirement slash farewell match on SmackDown felt just so like a, a backhanded, okay, you're leaving, we'll, we'll give you this. Like, And I understand the, the importance of it being on SmackDown. Edge was SmackDown. He was part of that SmackDown 6 that launched that era of wrestling and made SmackDown the better version of what it was before and the number one brand in WWE for a while. 
I get it that he'd never wrestled Sheamus before, but Edge never got in WWE that that marquee send-off match like Michaels got, that Flair got, that all of the other greats seem to have gotten. Edge got, and again, I do not mean to be disrespectful of this, but Edge got Sheamus in a build-up that was damn near non-existent. And there was more commercials than there was wrestling. <laughs> and then Edge wins with the spear, and the pyro goes off, and, and that was it. That. Yeah, I mean, I don't feel like heel Edge would have worked, though. Really? He's... he's not in a negative way, just he's been there so long and he's so popular. And how are you going to... He's somebody you're not going to have an, an easy time booing. Um, so I just... I don't think they any of them thought that it would work. Like, you can't turn Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's not going to get booed. It's just not possible. Um, there's just some characters that they've been there so long. You're not going to really have that opportunity. If Shawn Michaels came back, don't. Don't. They did once. No, they didn't. That doesn't exist. That never happened. Anything that happened in that land didn't happen. It's, that is, that is the Shadow Realm. That is, <laughs> that is Narnia. That doesn't exist in the real world. Okay. Um, so Shawn Michaels, after his literal and only retirement uh, in 2010 at WrestleMania, uh, if he came back, you know, for his first time in, you know, tw in 13 years, um, I, outside of taking him to Canada, like, you can't heal Shawn Michaels. Like, if Triple H was healthy, and unless he you come working, back. Unless you're working with Hogan, brother, and... <laughs> I don't even think that would work anymore. H uh, Hogan may not be the most popular everywhere after uh things and stuff so i don't i don't know like i feel like he's just been a he's 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 too lovable now to well, there, be hated there is a thing that does exist in professional wrestling really when you reach a certain point they don't feel anything but respect for you right like edge would have had to have gone out there and do some like pretty horrific stuff to get the fans to boo him to the level which that they were booing him weekly in that first run. I think from 1 to 10, this second run in WWE with Edge was... I'd give it like a 6 out of 10. Like, there were some good moments, but the, the injuries and... The one thing that really took me down on the ranking for that is how damn long Judgment Day and Edge and Rey Mysterio feuded. It felt like a year that they, they feuded against one another. And I mean, the, the sad part is like that group judgment day. It's the, the top bill for the raw brand. It's the second most important faction in the company. Yeah. And edge was the guy that started it. And how quickly we've forgotten edge really had any involvement in it. Yeah. But uh, like I said, I, I just, I just think they uh, they realized that it was not going to be very easy for fans to boo him, so they didn't bother. Um, put him in there, make the faction happen, and then turn him face as quickly as humanly possible and send somebody in there that they would rather boo. Because, um, no offense to Finn Balor, but he hasn't done enough in WWE to warrant unending respect and, you know, no chance of them booing. Um, he's got the what the one title the one world title run that lasted less than 24 hours due to injury. And that's it. Um, you know other belts I'm sure like I don't know if how many IC or US belts he's won, but like as far as the the big two, he's done one title run for a day, um, and then I had to give it up due to injury. So. Um, yeah, just I don't I don't think Edge was ever just Edge was never going to be booed, so they didn't waste their time with it. Um, they Do just you, but had to, him set it up. But to that to this token, 
do you feel that's what WWE should be doing more with returning legends like that? They're going to be on a run. Like, look what they're doing with, with Trish. She's not going out there and dominating the programming. Like, she's involved in feuds with, with top-level talent. Uh-huh. But she's in feuds. You know she's not going to come out the victor. And now I know Edge did pick up the big victory against the Demon at, at WrestleMania and Hell in a Cell. Yeah. But... Do you think that's the mold WWE should be doing with these stars? Like, it, were they on to something with Edge? Maybe. I mean, the problem with Trish is she, she entered a feud with somebody who's extremely popular. Um, so, hers was a lot easier to, to boo because, you know, Becky's extremely, you know, popular. Well, no, I, I was meaning, like, in terms of, like, they're not going out there, they're not winning championships, but they're involved in and high-level match with semi-younger talent. Right. And the talent, more often than not, is going over and looking good. <sighs> Depends on who the talent is, I guess. Um, like, I get that there... WWE doesn't like Finn Balor, it seems like, um, or his characters. Uh, you almost get the feeling that any of the Ookum Spookum characters, they... They're trying to kill off because Bray Wyatt's well, see, characters are all dead and gone, and, and now Finns are gone. Like they just they took Undertaker's character and went, well, he's gone now, so no more of this. There's the glass ceiling. You're all staying below it. There's Undertaker, <laughs> and then there's all of you. Yeah. Now that we're clear, business is normal. Right. But the the one thing that has been talked about heavily since last Friday night. Is Edge going to AEW, and that seems like a very legitimate possibility with a lot of credence to it. Edge has been open. He wants a final match with Christian. And where is Christian? Christian is in AEW. My thing is, let's say Edge goes to AEW. There is probably a non-compete clause, or there should be an Edge's contract for 90 days. So he shows up. And he, let's say Edge shows up in AEW. I don't think he can call himself Edge. I'm pretty sure WWE owns the intellectual properties to Edge. Maybe. Does he get to use that badass theme song that he's had for the last 15, 20 years? I don't. I Maybe don't he think go so. With the original. I mean, you might call up Rob Zombie and see if he can get "Never Gonna Stop Me," but. What version of Edge does that crowd get? And more so, like, I don't think Edge would be a good long-term fit in AEW. <clears throat> I think he's going to be a guy that if you went out and got Edge and brought him in to have his final match with Christian, he'll do numbers for you. Like, he's going to draw. Edge is a draw. He's a top draw. But long-term... I don't know if AEW would know what to do with Edge. I don't think Edge is there more than a year. Um, here's the thing. AEW is the re- reason Edge came back. Mm-hmm. Um, for those who don't know, Edge wanted to come back. WWE said, no, you're not cleared. We're not clearing you. Um, it's dangerous for you to come back. He went to Tony Khan. Tony Khan offered to clear him and set him in, in AEW. And Edge went, so anyway, I'm going to AEW, and WWE went, oh, so anyway, we're going to clear you. Uh, How long do you want your contract to be? How many Um, commas did you want in that deal? Yeah, uh, exactly how much uh, of a bitch do you want us to be for you Um, is essentially what WWE went, which is why I don't think he has a a uh, non-compete clause. I think he went, if, if, I think he went, no, my contract is what I say it is, or I'm going to AEW, and WWE didn't have much of a choice. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see him there within the next month, um, by the end of September. When is when is um August? A, a couple a couple weeks. Couple, couple weeks. I doubt he'll do that show. If um, I'd be shocked. That's too early. That's too short a, a runtime because it's already the twentieth now. But if it, if even with it being too short of a runtime, could you imagine? what that ovation would be like if they could keep it under wraps like WCW did with Lex Luger Mm, and Edge shows up and costs Christian 
a match at, at All In, that place would go absolutely apeshit if Edge showed up. Edge deserves a main storyline, a main event spot to have his final match, and he has earned that damn right to go. And look, again, I not any disrespect to Sheamus, but if, if you're being honest with yourself and if Edge is truly deep down honest with himself, Sheamus and him, that was not the match to call to Creon. That is not the match to hang it up on. Christian, and I'm not saying Christian's going to go out there and be AJ Styles or Bret Hart, but... And neither is Christian for that matter. <laughs> but it would be a good match. It would be something... There's, there is something to be said when you get in that ring and you're wrestling somebody that you have chemistry with and you are friends with because that will bring the best out of the two of you. I have been a part of that and I have seen it. And I have no reason or proof to think any differently in this situation. Uh -huh. But I think AEW getting edge, if that does happen, it, obviously it's big for the company. It'll do numbers. It'll bring revenue. But I don't think a long-term deal would be best for Edge. Because really, it's show up, you have Christian, I want Christian, you do the match, Edge bows out. Well, FTR were the people who uh, legitimately trained Edge. Sheamus was there for a couple of days, but uh, FTR were the ones who tra trained him for the most part. I could see Edge and Christian being in a tag match against FTR and then Edge turning on Christian um, for that final, you know, one-off. Uh, something like that, I could see that being a thing. I, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of options on the table. Um, if he wants to stay there longer and face off against, like, Omega, he never got to face Punk, that wouldn't be a terrible idea. Um, it's assuming Punk M has a job by that point. Uh, MJF he could face off against. Oh, those promos. Um, yeah. Um, there's quite a few people, you know. You go back to, to facing uh, Brian Danielson. Because um, they didn't technically have a one-on-one, -on -one, did they? They had yeah, a triple threat. It was a triple threat. But if, if you're so, bringing... If you're going to bring Edge into AEW... Does he have a bunch of matches, or does he just have the one against Christian, is the question. I, I think... Because he wants to requ retire uh, facing off against Christian. That's all I know. How he gets there is up in the air. I mean, you maybe you do the build. Maybe you build him for, like, a couple of months. God, a, a, a <laughs> he year. gets the AEW title. <laughs> it it you seems... Wild. It would seem so weird for him to be in, in any other company but WWE, but, I mean, it, it's very likely. Yeah. And I think Edge would do well there. He would do well for the company, but I don't think it's a good idea to employ Edge for longer than a year because the, the, the money match would be the retirement match, right. and it's with Christian. I'm not saying there aren't other people in that company that would be capable of giving him a good match. Edge can still go at a good high level, maybe he's got another, hell, maybe he does, two, three more years left in the tank before his body is like, okay, we're out, man. Like the neck, all the other injuries, thank you, but I want to be done. Um, I can see his retirement match being next year at All In, I like him doing one year and then and then calling it, and then just doing a couple of dream matches here and there, facing off against people, and then, you know, slowly working his way towards, you know, facing off against Christian. Um, or, or he's done by December. We, uh, who knows? Um, it's, he, it's, it's a two-month deal. He's probably the only one who knows. Um, so. But I will happens. say, if you're going to read into this, you're going to look down into the rabbit hole. How he was presented on that final night for SmackDown would be very indicative he's leaving for AEW. Yeah. That was not how you would treat somebody who was truly retiring within the company. Again, there were a lot of commercials during that match. Very little build. It was like, oh, yeah, he's done after this week. Here's this. Love you, bye. Mm -hmm. I don't know. To me, 
how it got presented, that's how you present somebody that's leaving the company. Even though he did win, but maybe that was their gesture. But I don't know, Anything else you want to add in on this before we wrap this one up? No, not really. I think we've got it covered. I think that's a good that's a good point, guys. Again, we want to thank everybody again. Sincerely, thank you so much for all the views, the subscriptions, the likes, the comments, the shares. Thank you guys so much. From from Colin, myself, Dre, uh, Johnny, D, everybody, Dan, everybody affiliated with Heated Shenanigans Podcast. We appreciate you. And guys, everybody out there, have a great week. And from Colin and I, we will see you on the next episode of Heated Shenanigans Podcast. Catch you on the next one.